Yeah. We should have cut that whole thing off. Like, seriously. <laughs> Usually I would, but in this case, I think I will. Oh my, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, this nah. is taking a turn. I was like, I don't want anybody else to learn about it, although it's very, very interesting. <laughs> anyway, hey, everybody. What's up? What's up? It's your Blur Girls. It's Bola, Triple F Queen in the his house. No tagline, Whitney here. And we are Blur Talk with Bola and Whitney. How y'all doing? How, How y'all doing? doing? I know y'all I are used to having a little bit more intro time than this. But, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> there was going to be more, but Bola went all X-rated, so uh, couldn't my really include. I was, I was recounting <laughs> the tales of my birthday weekend. <laughs> My birthday is on June nineteenth. Um, Father's Day, everything was all together. So I had me yeah, a fun and ass weekend. Juneteenth, yes, and Juneteenth, which is the theme of our episode today. Yeah. Um, so we will get into that. Well, it's a big but, thing, but uh, the actual like, I think we're focusing on high on the hog. Exactly. How African American cuisine changed America. Yes, that's our available on Netflix. Yes, and that's what we'll be discussing today. Um, and I, I brought it up because I wanted us to do something on Juneteenth. Um, this is the day we're recording this on the day that Juneteenth is observed. Mm-hmm. Again, Bola had a birthday weekend. I was, I couldn't put it on Juneteenth. Y'all I was, I was turning up this weekend. I was turning up. <laughs> 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 uh, just having a good time this birthday weekend. Um, but I didn't want to forget about how important Juneteenth is and what it means. And this show helped me see that too. Like mm. uh, learn so much watching this. Um, and we'll get into all that later. Anyway, but first, let's get into blurting out. Hey, blurting out. Hey, I'm blurting out. Hey, I'm blurting out. Hey. <laughs> so, Whitney, what were you blurting out about today? I there's so many things I could blurt out about, but I just want to blurt out about the fact that when um, before I watched um, this docu series that the episode is about, mm-hmm. I I don't know why randomly I w- it was on there maybe because I've watched something like years ago but I am blurting out about the fact of how many freaking like classic Bollywood movies that Bola introduced me to <laughs> are random. on Netflix right so now random. yeah because like 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 let yeah, me, you're let me watching look supernatural at the moment yes because they're long like Bollywood movies are long I don't know I don't have time right now but like Kao Ho Na Ho, Kabi Kushi, Kabi Gum. I don't think I ever watched. Um, Kabi Yabi, you, know, you never watched Kabi Yabi, I'm not kidding. That I might good. have. I just can't remember it as well. Um, Om Shanti Om. Shanti Om. Yeah, they all but are. like the only one that's like that I also really want to see that's not on there is um, Mushte Dosti Karogi. Oh, that's on um, that's on Amazon Prime. Sweet. Yeah, that one. I Amazon so want to rewatch that. And of course, Kao Ho Na Ho. I love because Kao Naho is the one with Mahi Bay, right? Yeah. I love that song so much. Mm-hmm. That's the way yeah, Mahi Bay. Yeah, and the pretty woman. Deco, deco, na, pretty, pretty woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say happy, happy day, guy. Yes, your girl sings Hindi songs. <laughs> don't, but don't, I don't was <laughs> so excited to see these because I haven't seen them in a while. And I was thinking to myself that I wanted us to do like some episodes where we look at some of the where we do episodes on like the yes. classic ones. Yes, they're the best ones. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're yeah. The best ones. <laughs> There's this new one that my sister really wants me to watch called RRR. Mm-hmm. It's like the most famous one right now. Even and my friend I knew has watched it. And mm-hmm. She doesn't watch a lot of Bollywood, but she's been like, well, you know, me and her use our, she used my Netflix. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. <laughs> don't come for me. But we both share it, and then she watches uh, like some stuff now. So she's been open to it. Mm-hmm. So I was really surprised because I was like, these are like the ones that, you know, like because they're like the ones that are like of the gods and stuff. So it's like her, because her culture, they're more Christian. So they don't normally like to watch those ones. Mm-hmm. But she was just like, yeah, I'm into these. These are really good. Like she just watches it just for the entertainment, mm. the culture scene. The thing. Yeah. And she loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And my sister was trying to get me to watch it so much. So I really got to like watch it. She keeps going on and on about RRR. It's like the number one Bollywood movie right now so i'm like yeah, is it like a classic it. one with like music and everything and oh it singing? has tons of music but it's um it's dance a period numbers. one but it's like one of those like epic bollywood ones because it's like no historical. dance numbers oh no there's, there's some oh, okay, there's okay, dance okay, numbers. okay cool cool so you will like it there's a bunch of them in there <laughs> awesome it's not like the new new ones where they're all like okay we'll just do like a a montage and the song will be under the montage <sighs> They've been trying to do less songs nowadays, but they this still is, dance. That is They're why I dance. watch a Bollywood movie. I they want still, the song. Exactly. They still <laughs> the dance. dance. And that's funny because this weekend I was talking, I was trying to show them one 
to see, and everyone, they were like, you know, I can't get into Bollywood. Like, they'll just be doing the movie, and I don't know, they'll just be singing, and so I'm like, but that's the fun of it. So, it's the reverse. I'm glad you, <laughs> you're down with it, but <laughs> I tried, my other Africans, they were like, not into it, and I was like, okay. But I love them. My family But you loves also them. like musicals, though. That's true, that's true. I don't mm-hmm. mind random acts of singing. I and don't. some people just don't like musicals. So if they don't like musicals, they probably wouldn't like like the classic Bollywood with the dance mm-hmm. numbers and, and stuff. You know, the classic Bollywood had like like six songs in them. <laughs> <laughs> which made them much longer, but they were very much feast for the eyes and, mm-hmm. you know, put a pep in your step. And they yeah. just made you want to dance. Like, I love, I still love, I still love a good Bollywood number. I mean, I still, I can still remember a little bit of uh, some of the Om Shanti Om songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's very dramatic. And I love it. Oh, that was like one of my favorite songs. It's so, like you said, it's so yes. dramatic. It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is like, this is like Broadway level like yes, stuff right yes, here. I yes. love it. Indeed, I love it. Indeed, they're very much. It was very good. Very it good. Is. So I'm glad you discovered them again. We'll have to do some some um yeah, we'll Bollywood. Have to decide for our which next. ones we want to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Because like uh be th- so excited to like okay. revisit these. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have to tell you about all the good ones that are on um Amazon Prime. Okay. I love it too. Sweet. Some of the classic ones are on Amazon Prime. Very good. Nice. Is that the only thing you're blurting out about? I know there's so many because we. Haven't I mean, been well, there's just so many Bollywood ones that are like classic ones that are back. So that's mm-hmm. kind of like the main thing. I already kind of well, no, I didn't blurt out about this. I talked like before we recorded last time. I was kind of blurting out with Bola, but it wasn't actually in my blurt out session about this anime called um, um, Ranking of Kings. Oh yes, it was. That was really? your blurt out for the last last episode. Yep. I thought it wasn't. Mm-mm, it definitely was. I remember you talking about it because I remember I, I was trying I to find it. I thought I blurted out about turning red. Nope, you didn't blurt out about that. You talked to me about it. Oh, I, so I got it air. switched around. Yeah, okay. you talked to me about it off the air, but you talked on pod last time about ranking of kings and you explained about the king's level and everything. Yeah. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. You haven't found it? No, I just didn't. I was looking for it and then I was forgetting which. Um, which place you said it would be on. And I was like, It's on oh, Funimation, but I also believe it's on That's Crackle. Why I couldn't find it because I was looking on the Hulu. F- I was looking no, on no, no, no. Netflix and I, cause I, I was like, where is this thing? No, it's like on the special, like the anime specialty one. Yes, so see, I didn't see that. Apparently Funimation is being, has been acquired by Crackle. So in Do the you next. you have to get a subscription to watch or. I did the trial. And then, <laughs> and then, then it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did. That seems to be the way to do things. That's what I'd be trying to do. Though, so, honestly, <laughs> um, well, since I've already used up my Funimation trial. I can't go back to Funimation without paying for it. But it wouldn't make sense for me to pay for it anyway since it's being absorbed into Crackle. But I probably would. I just want to kind of like find something similar to it because it was really good. Mm. It was really good. I think mm. you would really like it. So now I'm like ranking feeling like kings, I'm getting... Right? Yeah, Ranking okay. of Kings. Now I feel like I kind of want to get back into like an anime kind of binge. But find a good one. To like, but that's yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You just have to find a good one, and this one was really good. And I found out about it from watching um, a, str- a, a net uh, wow, not Netflix YouTube streamer, mm. and he was mentioning that he and his wife um, were watching a couple animes, and he mentioned this one. So I like checked it out, and at first I was like, eh, I don't know how much I'm gonna like. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I love it. My sister was talking about how I was like, I need to get back into watching a Korean drama, and I was just like, I really. <gasps> oh my god! Watch. Um, they just finished watching in the house. They always watch stuff without me, and then I get tired, and then I'm like, because I'm also like reading a lot. I'm trying to like I read. I just got back so into I've been, reading. Yeah, I've been. Well, I've been. Reading I mean, not a lot g- not since. got back into it, but it's just like you know, you have like these periods where you're like binge watching like a whole bunch of shows. Yeah, and I was and then reducing you get into that. Periods where you're binge watching a whole bunch of like books and stuff. So yes, I was reducing that because I wanted to read more and I've been you know, I've been really into Ooh, um, books by um African and black authors. Mm. So I've just got a whole stack of them and I've been listening to them. I get them on Audible and I've been doing both of them. But I'm gonna let you finish your, your blurt out first. But so I haven't been watching as much stuff. I've been really into the reading the books. Okay, now, since you mentioned it, now I feel like I, w- I want us to do both a classic Bollywood um, episode on some of the, the best, like, movies that mm-hmm. we've seen, mm-hmm. like, like back in college that you introduced me to, and also some of the best Korean drama ones. Oh, yeah. Like, freaking Coffee King. Uh, Coffee Prince. Coffee Prince. Like everybody's Coffee favorite. Prince. And um, 
I actually really loved also personal taste. Yeah. And personal taste was so freaking far ahead of its time. Like when yeah. he used his phone yeah. to pay. That's because the And that was like 15 far. years before we had the like freaking like pay with your phone thing. I'm like, yeah. dang. The girl in that just got married to, have you ever seen the Korean drama Secret Garden? You told me about it, but I haven't watched it. Um. Okay. Do you know who Hyunbin is? No. Hyunbin? Okay. So the girl from Seek, from Personal Taste, she just got married to Hyunbin. Hyunbin is like a really huge star. And he was like my, he was like one of my Korean husbands. He was mm. on my list <laughs> back in the day. And like, ugh, he's still on the list, but now he's like officially off the market. But he's in a drama called Crash Landing on You, mm -hmm. where he plays a North Korean and the girl and the girl from Personal Taste plays a South Korean mm. that gets like stranded in North Korea. For some reason, I haven't figured it out. I haven't watched the whole thing. But it's like a beautiful, like, cool love story. My sister was watching it. Her and my mom binged it like they always do <laughs> together. And she was like, it's a beautiful story. She's like, you got to watch it. And it's been, like, top. It's on Netflix, and it's been, like, top tier one. Mm -hmm. It's actually, like, a couple. It's, like, a couple years old. It's, like, I, I want to say 2020. Okay. But it's just, like, I haven't gotten into it. But it's, it's where they met, and then they fell in love, and then they got married in real life. So I just thought it was very interesting. And I was like, I gotta watch this. So, <laughs> yeah. But also, I would also say, f for sure, Coffee Prince, but also Boys Over Flowers. Oh yeah, that's a classic Boys one. Over Even though flowers. it's like super cheese, it's like, but it's, it's just so, so <laughs> cheesy. I'm not gonna lie. I go back into that, and I'm just like, nah, man. Some of this is like not even like cool. Some of it's like this doesn't make sense. Or you watched it and you love it for the time it was in. So I can't knock it because I do love it. So I did love it. But, but it's very cheesy. There's it's some things cheesy. that hold up. Like, um, I was like a couple weeks ago, I rewatched this old movie um, called Barry Gord. I think I was trying to get you to watch it, but you had to go. Um, called um, Barry Gordy. Yeah, that, that's his name. Old Motown guy. Barry Gordon. Gordy. Gordy, I think. Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Mm. It's this like 80s kung fu movie but the it's a black kung fu movie oh that I you know about this. a lot of people are like familiar with who's the master and i Show don't enough. Know, and i don't know anything about it yeah mm -hmm. but i rewatched that and it's so old but it still holds up i'm like this is still awesome <laughs> and there's some things you go back and watch and you're like eh. and then some things you're like no this is still awesome mm -hmm. that's true so it, i've watched boys with flaws many times and <laughs> I still like it, but I would probably skip like certain s episodes and stuff because I just like oh, I realized I didn't like these parts and mm. I'm like I don't like this, I don't like this, or I'm like they should have just ended like they should. I felt like the whole like last few episodes, except for the last one, mm -hmm. they didn't need like that whole like. Um, once they've left Macau and everything, once they left Macau and then the girl that was in love with him from Macau, who was, like, trying to break them up. That whole thing where he got amnesia and all that stuff, I felt like it was so unnecessary. I was like, this was just extra <laughs> drama that didn't even need to go in into this. They should just cut it and just, you know... It w it felt like filler. You know, like, the an anime filler episodes? That's what oh, it felt like. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, I want to blurt out about a few things. Okay. Uh, not too many things. Um, one, I'm going to blurt out about a local establishment here in Richmond. Mm. Called, um, tell me something good. I'm gonna tell you about this food, girl. Because <laughs> this food, y'all, I've been one, I've never been to New Orleans, I've always wanted to go. Oh and my god, so, it's so good! Everything I, I know, every, everyone talks about it all the time. So, it's a, a goal of mine to go to New Orleans, but I've always wanted to have a beignet because I just they just I've always wanted a beignet, and I knew that you couldn't get them anywhere but New Orleans. So that's what I thought. Mm. But there's a local lady named Brittany, and I told her when I went to her establishment mm -hmm. this weekend that I would shout her out on the pod because her beignets were phenomenal. And you then she some, also uh, gave you us some, some Instagram clip with her. I do have um, Instagram of me eating it in my face, like oh, the I powder, you everything. Because like, you always, you usually I did not talk to her interview or anything because we was just it was just friends just gathering. But I was like, I'm gonna shout her out because she gave us like some beignets on the house like she has different flavored ones mm. so she had the powder sugar one she had cheesecake one she had lemon mm. pound cake Interesting. she has like a salted caramel one and then she has like a honey uh, bun one you said lemon pound cake and now that just makes me think of um lemon squares from oh like the God. bmfa after hours. oh yeah those are good like too. i could put those things away but these beignets were like when they're hot and they come out oh my god like it's just crispy on the outside the powder it's just mm. it, beignets like hold up to their name like I was not, I was like, I hope these are going to be good. Because mm. Matt had ordered us some and then I was, I was running late. 
um, because I was waiting for somebody, and mm-hmm. then she ended up not being able to come to get me, so then I had to run, because they were closing at 5. Mm-hmm. So I got there like 4.30, and the lady was nice. She let us sit there for after 5, even though they were closing. Cause, uh, but he had gotten me one, but it had sat for a while, so it was cold. And I was like, nah, I'm going to order some fresh ones. And um, Jane had gotten for me. And we were just sitting there, and when they came out, and then she was just like, oh, you guys, you know, since it's your birthday, because me and Esther's birthday on June 19th, hmm. she's like, since it's your birthday weekend, you, here's the one on the house. I was like, oh, my God. She gave us like a, but these things hot, the honey bun one and the regular with the powder sugar. Girl, I almost like fell out. Like I, <laughs> I'm gonna post my video on. I have it on my personal Instagram, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna post it on the on the on the um, blur talk one mm-hmm. because y'all have to see. They were so yummy. Like <laughs> maybe me and you have to go back there and talk to her. But yeah, she was telling us all about her business and like how you know what she was planning on doing, how many people come in, and it was just wonderful. And she was so. They were all very hospitable. They can get lemonade there. You can get food like um, gumbo and cornbread there too. You know what? I would love to try gumbo. I know. I would love to try some too. So, especially you after you had me watch this docu series. I know. I know. We'll get into it. <laughs> but um, it's called Cafe Beignet, and mm-hmm. it's in Chaco Bottom, the historic Chaco Bottom, Richmond. And I just had to shout her out because it's just fantastic, yummy, delicious, y'all. If you're all in, if you are all in RVA, Richmond, Virginia, y'all need to. You just need to roll up. Check her out. Find out. If you've never been to New Orleans and you want to know what a beignet tastes like, come up and roll up because it was just, I mean, you know, I I love sweets. I know that's my issue. I do love a sweet, but this one is like a really good one. Like Mm -hmm. you you have to have it and taste it. It's so, it has to be fresh. When she comes out with it, you got to eat it right there. Mm -hmm. Don't be saying, oh, I'm going to take this home. No, you must eat it there or eat it outside in your car or something Mm -hmm. because it's the best when it first comes out. Oh my God. Mm. Y'all, I can't, I just can't. Like, this is going to be an episode where y'all just going to be hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all going to be hungry. We're going to talk about some things, but y'all going to be hungry. Um, my other blurred out is um, I was I started watching a series on HBO Max mm-hmm. um, called um, The Time Traveler's Wife. Now, The Time I Traveler's Wife. Interesting. I haven't watched it, though. It's very good, actually. Okay. The Time Traveler's Wife is a movie that was done by Eric Bana. That starred, excuse me, Eric Bana and Rachel McAdams mm-hmm. back in the day, like like 2008 or so. Yeah, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. And so I remember that I liked the movie back then. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, they're redoing this into a series mm-hmm. so that is longer. And so I wanted to watch it to compare it. Mm-hmm. So at first I was watching this and I was like, it's completely different from, I mean, the same thing, of course, happens like the time traveler. He mm-hmm. travels back in time. He doesn't know how to control it. He always ends up landing somewhere naked, everything. That part is still, he falls in love with a redhead girl, but mm-hmm. it's because his future self meets her when she's like, all that stuff is there. But the way they present it to you is completely different from the movie. Mm-hmm. So the movie is like more like a rom com type thing with a twist, you know. But this show is kind of like gritty, a little, not gritty. Let me, that's not the right word. Hmm. It's it's very more more edgier, you know. The guy is not as likable at first. He's very like I don't know what to call him, but the main character you almost don't want to like him because mm-hmm. they, they say this in the movie all the time that in the show mm-hmm. he's an asshole because he does he acts like an asshole all the time, mm. and you're like, oh, do I like him? No, he's an asshole. <laughs> he really is. But I'm enjoying the way they're showing and portraying his story. And I love the girl who plays. So the girl from Game of Thrones. I know who you're she, talking about. Exactly. She um, was also in uh, The Good Fight. Yep. And she was in uh, Death on the Nile. Um, oh, I still haven't watched she's that She's Kit, Har- Kit Harrington's um, wife. wife. And I'm mad I'm blanking on her name. But um, And then the sexy man from, Brid- uh, not Bridgerton, the sexy man from Sandington that left. He was the main guy on Sandington. And he left. And now he's doing this series. And mm-hmm. I'm like... They just have such good chemistry, but the show is really good. Like, I was like, man, did they go into more stuff in the books that wasn't in the movie, you mm-hmm. know? So I'm just like, and then I ended up watching the movie again after years. The show is not done, so I even missed last, I even missed yesterday night's episode, so mm-hmm. I still got to watch that when I get home. But I'm like really enjoying it. Like, I was like, oh, this is the character that was, this is him more in the show. It's like, oh, this is Gomez fleshed out. But in the movie, he was just like hardly there. Mm-hmm. But he's actually very important. Oh, we know more about the the the, the girl, the because it's the time traveler's wife. Mm-hmm. We learn more about the guy who's time traveling, the mm-hmm. main character. It's very interesting. So I just thought it was, 
I just thought it was cool to watch in hindsight, you know, after mm-hmm. like you watched this movie, you loved it. And now they're doing like a f- more fleshed out version because it's actually a book. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, this is a different medium, a way to enjoy it. And it's actually really, really good. I'm enjoying it. Mm. So comparing the two, you really can't because it's like that one's very condensed mm-hmm. and it's a film and the time period, mm-hmm. the graphics are different. Mm-hmm. But the way they do it now is just like, it's cool. All the tech gadgets and not gadgets, all the technology, technological improvements, excuse me. That kind of reminds me of that other movie, um, except for um, it's a similar premise. You're talking about the the time when we wa- we did we reviewed. Ah uh, no 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 the uh, this is a like a romantic. It was like a romance, hmm. but it was the the guy with the red hair, British guy. Oh yeah 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 yeah. About time. Yeah. Because Rachel McAdams was in that too, and oh, she yeah. also she's I don't really know why she's always playing these, like time people. travelers. Why? <laughs> Thank you. I was like, why are you always playing people that time travel? Even look at black um. She's always playing somebody in love with people that can time travel. You know what? You're right. Because Dr. Strange, Strange yeah. can time travel too. Like wow. If he wants to, you know, going through different multiverses and stuff. So interesting. And I was like, Rachel, oh my God, so you just love time people? I don't know. <laughs> but she does well. You know, she does yeah, well. Yeah. I liked About Time too. I did really like that. Yeah. But um, so those are my like two blurs out, blurred out. So I really enjoyed awesome. um, The Time Traveler's Wife, the series. Mm. On HBO Max, and it's playing right now. Um, you can watch the back episodes, and I'm I'm thinking it's still going. I don't know how many episodes they're gonna do because there's a new one now, mm-hmm. but it's still going. Um, so I recommend everybody check that one out. And mm-hmm. Cafe Beignets, you must. I would <laughs> like. I'm not gonna lie, Whitney. I'm probably gonna roll up sometime this week. Nice. Just to go back and like not share my. <laughs> because we like it was like three. There come three. The order comes three in a plate. Mm-hmm. And we were all sharing, of course, because that's how we do. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, I want to try the lemon one, and nobody eat it with me. <laughs> I want to have a. I want. I'm like, can you put three different ones on my plate? I'm just gonna ask her, <laughs> just so I don't have to eat like all buy like five orders because then that'd be really bad. <laughs> but they're really good. Maybe you'll come with me. But we can go. Sweet, okay. sweet. Yeah, I'd be down for that. All right. So we could just have a foodie day. We could do. I really still want to go to that uh, the pho place because I haven't been. Oh yeah, that place has good food. And then we could do like beignets <gasps> after maybe. I forgot they had those awesome spicy noodles that I ate there last time I was there. Mm. Girl, we just doing okay. So we just, just doing a foodie food. day. We're doing food apparently. We're like having <laughs> a foodie day, right? I don't know what it is. I'm like salivating now. I'm like I'm hungry. I know, right? I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're gonna talk about high on the hog. Um, and I wanted to do this episode because of Juneteenth. Mm. Um, it's a special holiday to me because, I, you know, I was, I've was i been doing a lot of thinking about this. Also, I had to plan a, a Juneteenth happy hour for work. Mm. Um, so I had to, like, look into some things more. Um, I, again, I've been reading this current book that I'm reading by Yagyasi. Yagyasi is her name, called Homegoing. And it's the story of... A woman, it's a story of like, it goes through generations. It's like mm-hmm. each chapter is a different person in a generation mm-hmm. of black people. It's the descendants of one African woman before mm-hmm. the colon, before the white people came. Mm-hmm. And then how her two daughters, they all had, they both had different fates. One was, one ended up married to a white person, but stayed in Ghana. So her line is in Ghana. Mm-hmm. And you find out what's happening with each, you find out all the historical things through each one of her descendants mm-hmm. and like how they deal with the British and mm-hmm. what happened and all that kind of stuff of being in Ghana. But then her other daughter got um, captured and sent to the Americas and they never met, mm-hmm. they never knew about each other because of some situations in the book. Mm-hmm. But the other daughter got sent to the Americas and became a slave. And then you find out what happened in each story. And I'm not going to lie, it's, it, at points it's heavy because of the situations, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's so beautifully written. It's really good to look at and see because it was like you're really reading some historical fiction. Historical fiction. Mm. And the way she weaved the story together about the connections of the line is like, oh, the next descendant, the next descendant. It's so interesting to look at it. And I had to go back in my mind and say, you know what? I remember I was asking people, how do they celebrate Juneteenth? If you do celebrate it, some of my friends said, oh, they're just going to cook out. They're just going to do this, whatever, whatever. But, and then some of them like, I don't really care. I don't know. Just like, you have to value the freedom that we have hmm. because you look at this, not just the story, but looking at even what we were listening to, what we we're watching today, mm-hmm. uh, what we're reviewing today, you have to be so grateful for the freedom here because just a few years ago, the people that are, are we're descended from, you know, mm-hmm. they didn't have these luxuries. They didn't have the luxury of freedom. Their, their, their beauty, 
their excellence, mm-hmm. you know, their ideas, mm-hmm. their richness, their culture. Everything was stripped away, taken. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they still survived under such extreme measures. So I was like, you've got to value that freedom. Like, I was, while doing and planning this thing for work, I was just, like, valuing the information. Mm-hmm. Upset that I had not known about Juneteenth until, like, I was 29 or so. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be real honest with you. I, and then it's like, I would know a birthday, a holiday it's on my birthday. It says Juneteenth. There's only a June, one, ni- one June 19th. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And I don't know if it's because, yeah, my family's from Africa, so I miss out on a lot of uh, some his- no, American historical things. This never really became a thing until, like, a couple years ago. But it's be- always been a thing. I Texas. mean, like, here. Yeah. Like, I had not heard of Juneteenth until, like. Just like the Tulsa massacre exactly. and a lot of other historical things. Right. Some of the stuff we found out in High in the Hog, too. Mm-hmm. I was like, so, I was like, it's just a great failing of the American historical thing education system because the the history well, I mean, that they I think teach it's institutional racism I, to of course as well you're right but the history they teach in the school is just not i remember the per, one like one person at my work told me in an email after the fact mm-hmm. that he was like so grateful to learn about this because he's much older than me mm-hmm. and he was like i didn't get this stuff in school like i went to school in the 80s and i was like i didn't hear any about this stuff i didn't know nothing about this and I just only showed them the June, the 10 minute Juneteenth clip in episode four of High of the Hog. Mm-hmm. And they were like, he was asking me, can you please tell me where I can find this whole series? Mm-hmm. And he is not um, black. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm so glad I got to enlighten some people because mm-hmm. we really need to continue to re-educate ourselves. I always say it's good to educate ourselves so you can act in love, but also in wisdom. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's some famous quotes in the June, in, um, in this episode that really touched me about one of the girls said something about when you know where you're from, you know your purpose. Hmm. But I just was like, we we have to value that freedom. I'm I'm glad we do celebrate it because that freedom is so precious. People died and fought for that freedom. They risked their lives, like leaving their the slave masters' houses, mm-hmm. just to have that freedom that we just like enjoy freely without thinking. Yeah. I encourage all of you who just to imagine whatever you love to do. Imagine not being able to do that. And then you value the why we celebrate Juneteenth. Mm. As a black person, just imagine whatever you like to do. You're they didn't care. You're not able to do it, or you were. You're you make something. They you, they took that from you. Mm-hmm. They made it their own. They took your like in this the recipes and things that this black person made. Oh no, the wife of the master that was her recipe. But no, the slave made these recipes, but they became hers mm. because the slave had no agency of any kind and wasn't valued. They weren't a person with creativity and idea, even though they were. Mm-hmm. And so I just was like compelled to like, no, I want to do something to honor and talk about this. And so I was like, yes, let's talk about it on the pod. Let's watch this awesome, awesome docuseries. And I'm not going to lie, enjoy some food because I'm like, "Mm, the food was so good. (laughs) Except for I couldn't enjoy the food because I didn't have the food in my mouth. I know. I'm not going to lie to you. If you watch this, you will be like dreaming of food. That was another feedback I got from somebody at work. Yeah. They were like, the food was... They were like, I went to sleep thinking about all that food. And they only showed them that part where they showed the cakes. I only showed them that. But the way they the way they show the cakes and the food and how mm. it's made in this docuseries, you just be salivating. You're just like, I need to go eat something. You be <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, it's awesome. But then it also makes made me kind of mad because I'm like, I want it and I can't have it. I'm telling you, that's the same way I felt when I first watched it with my family last year. We watched it all together. We binged the whole episode because I was like, I like to get my family to watch different things. Mm-hmm. So I have to like do what you do, make them captive audience and just like just push <laughs> it on them. And be like, no, we're all in the house together. It's pandemic time. We're not, we're all going to watch this. Like, stop. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to watch it. Because mm-hmm. I've been like, also, like I said, I've been re-educating myself mm. by reading things and watching things. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is one of the things I was like, I like High on the Hog because it makes education. It brings it in through the vehicle of food. And everybody loves food. You can't, you can't, oh, yeah. you can't be like, oh, Ooh, I don't, I don't yeah. like food. Everybody likes some kind of food. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, marrying the two like together Mm -hmm. where you it's like it's a history lesson appreciation it's african history black Mm -hmm. history everything southern history whatever you want to call it but you see all these things and it's all brought in through food it's woven throughout i just thought it was very smart and well done and beautifully done Mm. the whole series was just wonderful i've got a question for you yeah 
like in the first episode when they're in um Benin, mm, mm-hmm. there's like near the middle to end of the episode, all of these men are like pulling on this rope mm-hmm. out of the ocean. Do you know what they were pulling? I'm not gonna lie to you. That one particular part, I had no idea. I'm like, could you like, please fill you? in this blank? Cause like I, I don't I... know if they put that in there f- just for um just for like how it looked, because it kind of looked like a really cool scene. But again, I was like, what are they pulling? I thought they were trying to pull something out of the ocean. That's what I thought too. And but I thought at some point they would fill you in to let you yeah, know what was going on. And then they never did. And I'm like, what are Africans you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what they're pulling. Africans at work. That's it. Uh, but Whitney, before we get into it, I wanted to know, what do you think about Juneteenth? What are your thoughts? And I'm, I'm you don't have to like, oh, I love Honestly, it. Just tell me your honest I don't thoughts. Have, I don't have like strong feelings around Juneteenth. Okay, I understand that. Partially like, you know, it was only a couple years ago, like in the pandemic that i even knew about juneteenth and your family didn't tell you about this and i I, I, I kind of doubt that they knew about it either i mean well we are based out of virginia we're not based out of texas so Mm -hmm. i think it was probably more known in texas Mm -hmm. and you know with the way that black history is not particularly taught in the educational system including Mm -hmm. things like black wall street Mm -hmm. um the green um the green book Mm -hmm. like these new these like Television shows like um, Becoming so Educational, Watchmen, or um, what is it, <sighs> Lovecraft Country? It's only because of things like that that I know about some of these things. They're like buried. They don't teach you these things in school, and it's not mm-hmm. until these are like entertainment shows. But they also educate you about these things you didn't know about. But they're not mm-hmm. hitting you over the head. Because, you know, people mm-hmm. can... There are certain things that can be really heavy-handed. And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I get it. Like, you're not as receptive when it's, like, really heavy-handed. Mm-hmm. But it taught you these things. And you're like, oh, my God. Yep. This it's, is, like, crazy. Like, Sundown Towns? Never didn't know about it until, like, mm-hmm. Lovecraft Country. And the Sundown Towns are what exactly? Oh, wow. Um, you wouldn't have seen this. Lovecraft Country because it's, like, a horror series mm-hmm. on the I know. There were these towns, extremely racist, where mm-hmm. they were like, don't let the sun set on your back inward. In your back what? Inward. Oh. So basically, if you were a black person, it, kill you. if you were in the town in the sunset, yeah, you could be killed. It's disturbing. Yeah. So part of American history. Yeah. Never heard about it until Lovecraft Country. You're right. And like also stuff like, that movie Alice that I don't even know when that's coming out. Alice. Remember we were talking about this, about the times in the night. This is, this is like, this is after like, this is even after like, uh, Jim Crow stuff Mm -hmm. where certain places in the South, Mm -hmm. like they would keep black people in the, they basically were trying to recreate slave times and Mm -hmm. they would actually like convince these black people that they were still slaves and they Mm -hmm. would like own them and act like they were in slave times. Oh, that sounds and like that movie with Janelle. Uh, that one, too. Name. That mm-hmm. one, too. Um, Antebellum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And these were real places where these white people would just oppress black people like that. And this was like in the 1960s and 70s, mm-hmm. way after a lot of stuff. And you're just like, how was this allowed to be? Re-? But it was very real. Mm-hmm. So it's like stuff like that, that you're just like, this happened? Like, oh, yeah. Back in the 60s and the 70s, we were still like doing this. That we thought we were slaves. I was like, you're joking. Nobody told you. So to me, it's like with Juneteenth, if you don't know the story of what, of what Juneteenth is about, basically the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed and already freed the slaves. But because of the times and, of course, the, the travel and news spreading, you know, there was no, like, global multimedia at the time. Mm-hmm. Everything was, like, very horse and buggy. Um, even in the series High on the Hog, the descendant of Ju- Ju- um, Juneteenth said that uh, there's a story that the messenger that was bringing that news was killed because the the slave owners wanted to keep them for a lot longer because mm. they knew about the truth, but they didn't want to let their slaves go because one, they were benefiting financially. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to let them go because they want to continue. They were being defiant. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, so for two years, you just you're just not gonna 
you've known for two years. So those slaves, like, so not all of the black people were freed from mm-hmm. the Emancipation Proclamation. The real final black people that were slaves were finally told in Texas, Galveston, in 19, I mean, 1865. Hmm. But the um, proclamation was signed in 1863. Hmm. So they were working like a whole two years and a half still as mm-hmm. slaves when they were free. Imagine that. You are free, but you don't know. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. And I remember in, um, there's actually a quiz I took that you could just, it's like a regular quiz to test your knowledge of Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. But if you get the right answer, it just gives you blurbs of like facts. Mm -hmm. And I had shown this to my work colleagues and I was learning about it myself that it had said that there was some slaves that were not even free till like 1868 or something because one of their, their masters like refused to let them go. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until like. One person was hanged, like the master was hanged. Mm-hmm. Then the black, the slaves could be set free. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is crazy. And it's that defiance in letting them go. And it's just like that part like irritates me mm-hmm. so much. But it's like, wow, I didn't know any of this. Mm-hmm. Like, why weren't we told this stuff from me from the beginning, from the onset? I was like, man, you would think I would know about well, Juneteenth, but I've never heard it since like 29, 28, maybe. But you're right. It's just like they don't tell us the whole story. So like, we got to do it for ourselves. And I am grateful for these shows mm-hmm. that come out like High on the Hog, like Lovecraft Country, um, Watchmen. Watchmen. And there's a bunch of other things. And I also watch a lot of documentaries and things. So I watch that stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Like even Soul, um, Summer of Soul, that documentary I was talking about with about the music. Mm. But it's like they didn't talk about this festival that happened. But it was like a big cultural event for black people. Mm-hmm. But they suppressed it. They didn't want to want they didn't want to spread it. So nobody knew for fifty years that this big festival that had such greats like BB King, Aretha Franklin, and mm. uh, Simone, uh, Nina Simone, and a very very young um, what's the blind guy's name? Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Yes, and all these other great greats. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody knew that they were all together in one place doing it. And I was like, man, why was this hidden? This was great. Mm. But it's just like now this stuff is coming up. And I just think it's, 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 I just think it's good for us because it, it helps us to, like, know that, you know what, we're going to learn our own history. We're going to celebrate ourselves. And it's interesting, too, like, um, I was mostly focus, uh, focused on the food. Mm throughout but like some really interesting facts in there like mm. what you th- like Tell me what you thought um i found it really interesting the black cowboys yes and then how they said that the 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 term cowboy, cowboy comes from the black black from people black from slaves. like from slaves because they're like okay that's the the pig boy go get mm-hmm. the pigs boy uh go get the cows boy so mm-hmm. they were the cowboys yeah and then the fact that there's like a black rodeo, yes, in Texas, and I was like, Talk that's about it, pretty because cool. it wasn't just Little Nas X that was out <laughs> here making cowboys. I was not even, I'm not gonna, I was not aware of black cowboys until watching this. I was like, black people don't do this. This is some <laughs> white southern stuff. But I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I even found recently there's a black country singer. He dressed like a rapper, but he has a cow- he has a cowboy hat all the time. And I'm if sure you there's hear probably him, more than one black country singer because there's a uh, the guy from Hootie. Yeah. yeah, but this one is a different big. guy. I oh, okay. wish I can get the name. I will. F- I will find his name. But he Rucker. sounds like a white dude. Something Rucker is his name from Hootie and the Bros. Was it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he sounds like a white dude. But when I turned and when I saw him on um, one of my late night shows, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, "This is a black dude singing like this." And I just always like. Because th- they can be different kinds of black, mm-hmm. you know. We just have to remind ourselves we can be different kinds of black. But the black cowboy, I just like I did not know that that was a thing because mm-hmm. I was always associating cowboys with white people, mm-hmm. not realizing that we came. Honestly, just like they said in the in the show, a lot of what's a, a lot of what is American history culture. and culture th- things were t- stolen and taken from black people, mm-hmm. and it's so much. Look at the cowboy thing you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I didn't, I thought, I like the story that we saw in episode three about Hercules, um, the two chefs that mm-hmm. for the, for the presidents. Yeah. 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 And how they were like, one, this guy was like classically trained in France, mm-hmm. a black person. I he was, that was free the other to guy. Be, I don't think that was Hercules. Well, not for Washington. Yeah. Hemings was the, was, um, uh, Jefferson's yeah. slave. Um, okay. Let me go back to Hercules then. I like that Hercules, he was like. When they were in the north and they had the whole thing about in, the, in Pennsylvania, I did not know this at the time, but that if a black person was there for six months, for well, more than six months, they were technically free. Mm-hmm. 
it's so crazy and messed up, but that Washington, because he knew this, mm-hmm. he would take his slaves back down to Virginia to reset the clock. And mm-hmm. I was just like, this is some BS. Yeah. Because the at the time, the president's mansion was in Pennsylvania. And I did not know that little tidbit, but I was just like, that's messed up. I didn't know that the up. president's mansion was in Pennsylvania either. Yeah, it wasn't always in Washington here and down in Virginia. Um, well, Washington is really its own little spot. But yeah, it's its own it's, it's, district. It's originally part of Virginia, I think. Mm. Um, but I did not know that, but I just thought it was so messed up. So he's like, no, nah, I'm still keeping y'all. So y'all look, come down here. And at one point the guy was trying to shine. He was so good. He was an awesome chef. He was trying to shine and do him. And then for Washington to do him like that, where he like made him like, you know what? You need to just like, you're not going to be working in the kitchen anymore. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be the star in the kitchen. You're going to be in the labor fields. Mm-hmm. I can imagine the bitterness that Hercules had. Because he's like, I do this. People know me somewhere. I have this gift and skill. Mm-hmm. I would like to be on my own, like one of those people. Mm-hmm. But not being able to because of this nonsense of slavery. Mm-hmm. You know? I just love the story that they told us. One, I'm I'm mad. I wish we learned about things like this in school. Mm-hmm. But I love hearing about black defiance when it comes to oppression. Mm-hmm. Whether it's African or any other place. Caribbean. Wherever it is. I love that during a big party... He took it. He's like, okay, I'm going to make this meal. I'm going to do this for the party. While y'all are partying, I'm going to bounce. And mm-hmm. he's just like, I'm going to disappear because I was like, I refuse to be a laborer. Mm-hmm. After having all the success and getting a taste of being my own person, mm-hmm. he was like, I'm out. And I love that they couldn't find him until even after he, after Washington died, they couldn't find him. I love a story like that. Mm. I love it. And then they end up finding him. It's like, I don't know how he got his way from Virginia to New York, but I mean, it's, it's amazing. His resilience that he ended up popping up. Underground railroad. (laughs) Well, this was back in the like, um, 1700s. So I I thought the underground railroad was a a bit later in the 1800s. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know when the underground railroad started, but I would think that, you know, um, who are they? The, um, Amish Mm. tended to be the ones. Mm, well, maybe because yeah, they're they were they're based in Pennsylvania, so it could be. So I would think maybe that he found help. they probably always had that kind of moral compass. Mm-hmm. So it probably existed for a while. Would yeah. be my guess. I don't know because like <laughs> history was never my favorite subject, other than like ancient civilizations like Egypt mm. and stuff and Greece and Rome. But yeah, I I can't remember. Oh. American history was like my least favorite subject. I understand because they tend to focus on all the boring parts. Um, they don't like liven it up and they don't tell us. And it was always so, um, I hate to say it was always very white centered. Mm-hmm. I hated that we had to constantly learn Europe- European history like over and over. I was like, why am I learning this again? <laughs> I remember I went to college and I was like, I'm learning European history again. And I was like so happy to take African history one time, even mm. though the professor was kind of weird. He was from my family's country, but mm-hmm. he was a different tribe. But uh, I was just like, at least hear something different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Asian history. Let's hear something different. I was like, we're constantly learning about this all the time. It, but it's so white-centered. And I'm like, let us know some stuff. Like, we don't know anything about ourselves. Even mm-hmm. me, I had to relearn about my family's culture. Watching, do- I watch documentaries and things about mm-hmm. Nigeria so I can learn. Like, I didn't know there was a civil war in Nigeria. My mom doesn't talk about it. Mm. It was called the Biafran War. They, the Biafran was the Igbo tribe. They wanted to separate from Nigeria. But I was like, this is stuff that, that I'm like, how come I don't know this? You know, when, and when, it's when like. When was this war? Hmm? When was this war? It was back in the, um, the 60s. Oh, 50s wow. and 60s. Yeah, oh. it, was very, it was very recent. So it was, she was a little girl at the time. And okay. she said she remembers when they were doing the bombings and the shellings and all that kind of stuff and having to like hide somewhere and all that. And I was like, Mom, you don't tell this stuff. But my mom is like that. She's not forthcoming with details. Um, to talk but then to again, her if you live through trauma, like, why would you want to unearth that trauma, though, at the same time? That's true. She said it wasn't that bad to her, but it was just like, she was a child, so it was like, she doesn't really understand what was going on, but she true. remembers these things. She just remembers, she just gave me that one memory of yeah, hiding some, from the bomb. in bombers. childhood, yeah, you've got, like, certain memories are stronger than others, so it's not, yeah. like, my And it was time. over pretty, qu- it was over pretty quick, because mm-hmm. they starved out the enemies. Mm-hmm. And African people, once you, they can't eat, they will give up their, their cause. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and we'll give up. They're like, okay, we well, we were we're starving in here. Okay, we're done. We'll, we surrender. And it was <laughs> over. That's what my mom said. <laughs> I can't do that. That would be me. I'm like, I, I'm hungry though. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, but, but I love that he Hercules. He was defined and he left, and then. Washington was like emailing, oh, not emailing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But he was like messaging and writing. Wow, no. He was writing letters. He was messaging <laughs> just back then. He was writing letters to all his people. Have you seen Hercules? I need my food. <laughs> I, need <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. And I just could imagine him just laughing to himself. Like, and when he finally made it to like New York, mm. just laughing to himself. He changed his name. And everything, mm-hmm. and I just thought that story was amazing. On the verse, the reverse, the story of Hemings, where Je- Jefferson was like, "Well, I need you to cook, like, because I've been in France this whole time. Mm-hmm. I need you to cook like the food I've been used to, because the French can make food, mm-hmm. the British can't. You know what I mean? So he's like, you 'You gonna learn how to cook this food in France, where he's free, by the way, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna bring you back here, and you're gonna be my slave.' I mean, can you imagine the just the juxtaposition, just like." Meh, meh. And the thing that another thing that just made me really sad about that story, like he bargained for his freedom with his own little brother. I know he's terrible. That was the yeah. That was like that's mess. But it's like survival. But it's like yeah. It's like there's nothing he could do as far as his he's his like uh, the rest of his family. Of like, mm-hmm. but it's just like dude. Because <sighs> then you just like, wouldn't you fight for freedom for your for your your younger brother as well but no he's like you go and train somebody else but then they be stuck in freedom but it's like everyone he's like think about you you know survival skills you really and now that i think about it though like i guess if you're a cook you're probably better off than other slave positions Mm -hmm. so maybe in Mm -hmm. a way it was a help if he couldn't be free then best to be the cook Mm -hmm. well he had he had well you you know what he acquired him from his father-in-law because I found out, because they said that the, the Hem, Hemings was the younger brother of one of his mistresses. But then I also found out, oh, no, his main mistress, who had all of his children, like, who had, like, six children from him. But then yeah. I found out his main mistress was half-sister to his wife, you know. So they basically came from his father-in-law. And that that girl was his father. Like, he basically had two sisters. He had the white wife and the black wife, and they were both sisters. Oh, snap. So Hemings was probably the younger brother of that person. Wow. It was crazy. And I was just thinking about learning. I was like, oh, my God, it's just too, it's just too gross for words. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, but I like that. I like that he still got a chance to be free. Like, I, that, I, at least that he let him he let him go because you could see how much talent he had and all that other stuff. Because some people during that time, they were like, you're not going to be free. They would, like, rather kill their slave than let them be free. Hmm. You know? You'd be like, you're not going nowhere. Even if they ran and they caught them, their life would be worse. You would be beat uh, all the, You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They might even chain them or something. So, like, I, I mean, I guess that that part, I'm not trying to, like, make Jefferson sound great because, you no, know, I don't care. As brilliant as he might have been, I'm just, I have my own personal opinions about him, about mm-hmm. that part, because it's like, it's your own people. And, you, you know, and you deny this guy his freedom. But you had to like haggle with him. You're like, okay, you want to be free? Train somebody else who can cook because I mm-hmm. need my cook. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just very selfish. But um, it just showed me how, you know, these people were very great chefs. But it just showed me a picture of how their greatness was like overshadowed or stolen. You know, they could not. Be, they're like, you know how we talk so much about intellectual property now? Mm-hmm. Everybody's always like copywriting this and they make sure. It's like they could not do that with any of anything they produce, any of their brilliance. Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's like they didn't want to attribute anything to black people that they actually did. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it, it's like part of this freedom. I'm, I'm honestly happy. Like, I know this thing came out of the George Floyd thing of a, such a tragedy, but mm-hmm. I'm happy that this thing has come up Mm -hmm. so that it will encourage people to go and look into this like go and look into what Juneteenth is about go and look into your own histories go and look into what these real these real stories about what really happened and I would say also creatively yes being um creative people like well who should be like finishing her freaking book or screenplay or whatever she's (laughs) gonna do let's not Um, do this today okay like be inspired by these things like you don't have Mm -hmm. to hit people over the head with stuff like shows like Watchmen, so good but there was a piece that educated you and made you curious you Mm -hmm. wanted to learn more about Mm -hmm. it 
It wasn't just like this thing that they're banging you over the head with. Same thing with Lovecraft Country. It's like, was this really true? You, I looked it up because I was interested. I This is not something that would ever, like I said, I'm not uh, really a history buff. But I'm like, did this really happen? I went and looked it up because of these things. So like, as a creative, if you're out there, like, if you can, if it makes sense, like, incorporate things in there that educates people as well. Because mm-hmm. it's important for these things to be known if they aren't. Because, like, things like this. And then, like, I think about the harder they fall. Mm, yes. Even See, though it was very sensationalized. Yes. I went and looked these people up because I was just curious. I'm like, did these people exist? They, they exist, did. They, they, did. they didn't exist in the way that they were portrayed in mm-hmm. the show. But it's like, these people existed. Yep. And they were black cowboys. And I was like, and, if you and I'm not a Western girl. I'm not. a really good creative work, mm-hmm. people will be curious enough to like look these people up without you being like preachy over the head stuff. But you can make like... But you have to make these things. People have to create. That is why I'm, I'm sorry, I am a history buff. Mm-hmm. And I am very much a fan of historical fiction. Mm. Very much a fan. Because you can learn what was going on in the time, even though you, but you can, it comes in the vehicle of a creative work, mm-hmm. like you said. It comes at you in a different form that's easily digest- digestible. You mm-hmm. like a story, you're following these characters, mm-hmm. you're sitting in the setting, but these things were happening. Like, mm-hmm. even me, in the book I mentioned called Homegoing, y'all should get that. Seriously, it's so good. I've not finished it yet, but it, what I've been reading, I'm in the middle of the book, I'm learning some stuff that I was like, wow. I remember learning from about my culture from reading... Um, things fall apart in, mm-hmm. in AP English 12. You know what I mean? I was like, wow. I went back home to my mom. I was like, mom, was this how Africa was? And Because it was Nigerian. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why do I have to learn this from this book? But he was a Nigerian author and he wrote it. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I remember like being fascinated by it. I was like, wow, I didn't know that uh, Africans have a pol- history of polygamy. Like Africans, like, it's just it. They had multiple wives. Mm-hmm. That's just the culture of West Africa at the time. Mm-hmm. And she talks about this same thing. So I know it was a fact because Mm -hmm. this is another author, different person, different uh, generation. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about the same thing about the structure of how Africa was before the white people came. It was a man and a compound and he had multiple wives. Each wife had their own hut and they took care of their children and their own wife. He would move back and forth between the huts, whichever wife night it was for him to sleep with or whatever. Mm. And then the man could have multiple children, 20 children. That that was normal. Mm -hmm. That was fine and that because that's how the cultural society mm-hmm. is made up and i was like wow i didn't know about these things i didn't know about and yeah i'm reading the book and about how they're like man some of the africans did contribute to the slave trade like they were selling some people there was but because there was a lot of warring factions and tribes at the time they were they were always oh, warring yeah together. that was part of like high on the hog that yes. i was like really sad about what was it like the um abome mm-hmm the kingdom because yeah. I was really interested about it and they're like oh they have the female warriors and yep. I think they call them Amazons maybe or maybe mm-hmm. they just reference that fact I don't know if they were actually called Amazons well I don't know I'm not sure mm-hmm. but I was like oh awesome female warriors and then I'm like oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. but like yeah yeah it's, it's so hard to find that stuff out but you're, you're just like one of the things I, I like to say that my mom was telling me how she's like, you know what, even though they were part of the church, they were, but th- the problem is like the British were very cunning. They were liars. They, and the well, let's just say the white, because it wasn't just the British. The French were up in there, mm-hmm. all the Europeans. They were very cunning. They were liars, manipulators, and they did not show and tell the real horrors of what they were doing. They, yeah, Africans had their own slave. They had servants, but they did not treat them with such low dignity as the white people treated the black slaves because you even read in the book about how they had trapped people in the and you saw the pictures of the coming out of the castle how they had them in the dungeons they had them waiting there for hours in their own feces and blood they died in the dungeons before they even got the the walk it took just to get to the to the dungeons where they kept them mm-hmm. until the ships came to get them it was it's so inhumane it's like you don't you don't even treat your animals like this Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like, I was like, I wonder, do they know what's going on? Some of them did, and they still did anyway because it was like about their own survival. Everybody was trying to do survival, but I don't think they even knew about the how terrible people were being treated mm. in the Americas. And I remember she mentioned this in my in the book I'm reading, in The Next Generation, about in the talks of abolitionists. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how, she was talking about how, oh, these people 
oh man, man, you guys, are you hearing about what they're doing? How they're treating them in in the continent in the Americas? It's really bad. So it's just like they did not know the extent of what they were gonna do with the people, mm. because they had their slave. They would beat their own servants or whatever, but they still treated them like people. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, you're clean. You're just you're you're serving us, but you get some food. You're not like a dog. You're still a black person. Hmm. They would not treat them as bad as the as, they, as the white people had treated them, and I, like I said, with this high on the hog, it is a good way to get the history of black people in America, mm-hmm. with also but learning it through your food. So it's like mm-hmm. I actually learned how to like I'm not gonna lie, I took that whole thing about cooking your pasta and milk, and boiling the mac it with cheese. milk and for the mac. Oh my god! When I first watched that and I started doing that, mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Pasta dishes were just banging. My mac and cheese that I used to make, banging. Mm-hmm. That that little tip about boiling in half milk, half water, and mm-hmm. some butter, that thing makes your mac and cheese. The pasta is just just but oh, <laughs> it's so good. It's just so good. I learned so much stuff just watching these four episodes. Um, <laughs> than any. <laughs> yeah, so I, I learned so much. Um, I love that they went from Africa to this. Um, you know, you talk about Gullah Gullah Island, the show, and I, I like that I was one thing that Gullah I was people. like, "What is this?" I wondered about that because I was like, when they said the Gullah people, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, was Gullah Gullah Island about yes, about was, those people, the yeah. islands?" And I was like, "Oh my god, this is like." Coming back to me, I was like, man, I did not know this was it. Like, I didn't know either. But I it also Gullah makes Gullah you, it, it kind of makes you like, okay, Nickelodeon was a little bit ahead of the time. Mm-hmm. Like with the, with the. Creating the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. creating the show it. and they stuff. They tried it. And I was just like, oh And I God, loved, I, I love the song. Come and let's play together in the bright sunny weather. Let's all go to Gala Gala Island. Gala Gala. Binya What <laughs> to see and to do there? All we need now is you there. Let's all go to Gala Gala Island. Gala Gala. Just go take your food in your hand. That means hurry up, don't miss the great things that we plan. So come and let's play together in the bright sunny weather. Let's all go to Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah Island. Hey, that was like a really good song. I it love is it. It's a really good song. But to learn that the Gullah people, and I like learning that the Gullah people were able to, like, because we definitely have uh, um, like okra, rice, all this kind of stuff. That whole episode was just amazing about the rice it kingdom. It was so interesting to me because I don't, I don't think I've ever tried gumbo. I really would like to, but I've never had okra to my knowledge. Mm. That's not like something that like my family. It is a bit slimy. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, but you, you have to try it first. Like that's if you blend it up mm. because the insides are slimy. Oh, okay, but if you cut it up. It just makes the soup, it gives a thickener to the soup, but it doesn't make it too slimy. But when you blend it, because my family, they love draw soups, mm-hmm. viscous type of things. We have a couple of them. Mm-hmm. But it's when you blend certain uh, vegetables and mm-hmm. things together, it makes it makes it thickening and makes it like a slimy. But it tastes mm-hmm. amazing. Okay. So the gumbo has the okra in it. Um, and I just like, they got this stuff from West Africans. Because I was like, yes, this is, looks like our things that we made. We use this, we use that. But I like how he explained that the Gullah culture is like, they were able to keep their African roots because of their isolation. Mm-hmm. And because they were on the island and a lot of people didn't want to come down. So it's like, you were just seeing all these different things. Like, yeah, that was learning really interesting. the roots. And I still, I'm telling everybody, if you're a black person in America, your roots are here. You're not like a first generation American. You need to really like do an uh, ancestry thing and not 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 ancestry.com. You need to do African American ancestry. There's this actually one, something called African ancestry. I think it's, it's dot African com. ancestry. That's what I mean. African my mom ancestry. did that. Which is how I found out that me and Bola's people are like neighbor. Well, at least on my mom's side. Because my mom's mom's mm-hmm. side, yeah, are the Tatar tribe of Cameroon. Thank you. We couldn't do my mom's dad's side because you needed a male Mm -hmm. relative and my mom it was just her and her Mm -hmm. sister so Mm -hmm. they didn't have a male relative to be able to test but look it told you which tribe so you know where to go and look at your like 
you can that know was what pretty cool. these tribes are known for, mm-hmm. what these people did. You can like, oh, these tribes were very warriors, or these tribes were like, they fought the British, or they fought the whites that came, or this tribe is very communicative, or this tribe is very spiritual, or this tribe was very good with money. Mm-hmm. And you would know that once you found out which tribe you, you know, these ones are known for certain wild, like arts, mm. you know, and crafts. You, 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 you need to know those things. Because sometimes you would see... I just thought it was so interesting in how one of the episodes where he was working with the brother Twitty in the, I think it's the same Rice episode, mm. the main guy who's throughout the, who are throughout the series, um, he's a chef, I think, himself, or at least a food blogger or food writer, um, but he's the main guy going through the series. I remember he was a former sommelier, but I can't remember what else he was. Yeah, I know it was something either. food related. Yeah, he's like, he's the main leader, he's the main guy going through the journey throughout mm-hmm. all the episodes, and you're following him, and he's going to meeting all these people and talking, mm-hmm. and he was talking to Mr. Twitty, who's like a a food historian, which I just think is a very cool job. I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa, how do you become a food historian? He tells all these stories through food, but he recognized how even though they try to cut things off, certain things they c- the white people could not take away from black people. Mm. They like they kept some things like all throughout the line. It might have been a little bit changed, but there's some things that that's how black culture is so. In like it's very indicative of the people. It's very um, you can sense black culture. You can see black culture. It's just there. Mm. Just like African cultures are very very distinct. Mm. African American culture is very distinct too. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like they still kept some things, and I like seeing that that it showed that how they were able to just manage and change because you know they were trying to strip away everything because they were like we don't want you to think about africa at all we don't want you to mm. you know we don't want you to think about that and that's how they were subjugating them because they were cutting them off from what they know but your some name things is toby th- exactly but some things stuck and some things came and they and it just morphed into something new and different mm-hmm. and i love that he was showing that like just in a little thing about how they both knew that you don't put your spoon you don't put your mouth on the spoon when you're tasting the food mm-hmm. that's an african thing like mm-hmm. we, they were like they were like you do not put your mouth on the spoon mm. when you're cooking you put it in your hand and you taste mm-hmm. that's what we do too mm-hmm. and i was like oh you guys do that it's just those little things mm-hmm. little things like pop up so it's i think it's great that you got i feel like i really feel like everybody should do that and just to find out what tribe or any like region they come from mm. it's really i think it's worth it to do what do you think Whitney? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, my dad hasn't done it. It would be interesting to find out from my dad's side. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was pretty. It was really cool. Yeah, but um, High on the Hog is it's very. It's just a very good series. Like I remember, I could not stop watching it. Like the cinematography in which they did the food and showcased the food. I also like the ideas of, like just displaying um, what African American food is because a lot of people think, especially Southern. African American food, they always just think soul food only. Mm. And it's just mac and cheese, collard greens, cornbread, fried chicken. That's not the only thing. Mm. And soul food can be high end food. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just like France is, I'm sorry, France is not the only place that has, or Italy, they're not the only place with fine dining. I'm sorry. Mm. Let's, let's get that straight on the get go. Any culture can have fine, high quality food. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I like that they showed this, that not just the collard. We love our collard greens, and, and we love that food, too. But oh, there's so other things that are southern food that are fine and nice, like the oysters and just the different meals that they prepared. I was like, this is also black food. This is also African-American food. Mm-hmm. This is also food that shaped American upbringing. You know, I love that. There was also something that I found interesting um, in the very first episode. And it was the yam versus the sweet potato. Yes, tell them. Tell them about it, like, girl. Talking about how, like, in Africa, they have yams. But it's then when the we came to, mm-hmm. to the Americas, like, there weren't yams here. So they would adapt sweet potatoes yep. to those things. So, like, black culturally-wise, we use yam and sweet potatoes, like, interchangeably. Yep. But we don't actually use yams in our yep. stuff. They're like, we're yams. always using sweet potatoes. Like, the things that we buy, they are sweet potatoes. We, they're I They're not called never... yams. But they call it yam, but they're not really yams. Yeah. But it's just because the name has come over. Yeah. It's because they're, like, they had nothing else to And then they show, it. like, this is what an actual yam looks like. If it doesn't look like this, you are not using yam. Yes, <laughs> you are I using sweet so potatoes. Great. I was like, tell them, girl. Tell and I was like, why. wow. 
Because I was like, I grew up eating yam. Mm. I was like, you guys do not eat yams. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why is this orange thing? And I remember I never tasted that orange thing. Because my mom, she's like, we don't have this. Mm. I don't know what this is. But they do have it in some places. But I was like, I don't know what this is. My mom's like, we don't eat it. Mm. So they just, they don't know how to use it. I was mm-hmm. like, mom, you never saw this thing? I just decided myself to taste it mm-hmm. one day. And I was like, oh my God, this is good. <laughs> and I was like, this is, I can get down with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got introduced my family to it. So my mom Mom likes sweet potatoes now. My sister doesn't. Yeah. But my mom likes sweet potatoes now. But it's just so interesting how we've been using it interchangeably. Yeah. But then you found out why. Yeah. But yeah, I found that really interesting because I'm like, yeah, we do. We certainly like being like multiple generations um, in America. We certainly use yam and sweet potato mm-hmm. interchangeably. Yep. And we have like nothing. We have never used yam. Yep. Ever. Yep. Like, yeah. But- <laughs> I brought you yams when you had the asaro I made for you. Ah. My mom made, actually, sorry. My mom made it. But that asaro, that's yam. That's mm. actual African yams, the white one. It's so good. Um, but uh, you're right, Whitney. It's like certain things you just never know. Yeah. I didn't know about the rice because everyone thinks, oh, well, Asian people and rice. Yeah. But in America, it was, I did not know this at all until I watched this, that they really brought the Africans, like, the rice people did not, the white people did not know how to grow rice well. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until they brought the slaves over that they could actually grow them. Mm-hmm. I was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. They were just stealing our gifts, our talents, our, our you know what I mean? Just for mm-hmm. their own stuff. And then just like, you know, it went everywhere, but it was slave labor that was making it. But it's like, it was because of our ingenuity and our, our um, agricultural skills mm-hmm. that made rice industry so booming in the south in mm-hmm. that time i just jambalaya and all that kind of stuff in the south all and rice it's dishes. also interesting because i think about like i'm not as big on pig feet my parents um mm-hmm. enjoy it I but like before though but like hearing about you know how like back in africa everyone who like people who hunted they knew to use everything mm-hmm. and i'm sure like you know native american wise that was probably also similar mm-hmm. but like when he was like doing like the, the community thing oh, with the yeah. whole pig, and he's like, mm-hmm. so he used everything from yep. the pig. The guys, and he's like, everything. I was like, wow. Even me seeing that, I was like, damn. But like finding out, because like you think of stuff like, because he was talking about the things that were undesirable yeah. to like the 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 slave masters. So things like the intestines, mm-hmm. the feet, and stuff. And you think of chitlins, mm-hmm. like, oh my god, I love chitlins, so good. But like those are things that. They were the undesirable parts, and, and it's they like made a meal out of it. They fed their families. Mm-hmm. Black people did what they had to do. They were like, "Oh no!" And then that's be also because Africans knew that's what they do. Africans use all the animal parts mm. to eat. I mean, I've seen some people eat some like head of animals, yeah. goat head, and all that kind of stuff. They eat the brains, lungs. I'm telling you, they'll eat all of it because mm. it's all protein, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't eat all of it, but I have eaten some different parts. People like I've had cow heart before. Mm. I eat the tripe. Um, I've eaten cow feet before. Mm. Um, I just don't like snails. Snails, I can't. The large, they eat the large snails. I can't get down with that. I just don't I've like never it. Had, I've never had snails. Well, I mean, the French eat escargot, so that's And French. I've never that's had snails. escargot. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because I don't know what it tastes like. Frogs and snakes, I'm not. I mean, frogs and and um, snails, I'm not trying to eat. Although I did have some alligator this weekend. I'm not about it. I've had alligator before when we were in New Orleans. Oh, see, of course, but I'm not about. But I it had was some, good. I had Maybe some you just need to have alligator bites, and I just was like, it tasted like it. It's not like chicken. I'm telling. I'm sorry. It tastes like fish, like flounder, which I hate. And I was just like, I'm not about this alligator life. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I will try gator again. But I had a I had a gator nugget at this place here this weekend. And I was just like, I'm, I tried it, but I was like, I'm not going to eat it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So gator is not for me. Like I said, I don't do the reptiles. <laughs> gotcha. But gotcha. you're right. They use all the pieces of the animal and made a stew, made something good. They made fed their families. And, you know, I just, I loved all the stories in this series from beginning to the end of all the different people trying to uplift the food of black people, mm-hmm. Africans, which are from everywhere, and showcase and tell the history mm-hmm. of their place and their area mm-hmm. and the food. And I just thought it's amazing. And I never knew. Did you know about this phrase called high on the hog? I've heard it before, but um, not not terribly often, though. I've never heard of high on the hog before. It's not, I'm so not I even sure where I heard it, but I, it's not something mm-hmm. I hear often okay. enough to even be able to tell you if how many times I've heard it. But I, I know I have heard it. 
Mm. So what do you think high on the hog means? Food euphoria? Food Be- euphoria. That's what I would think of. Based off of the show? No, just based off of the actual phrase. Like, if I knew nothing else, just high on the hog, I would think, like, mm. high on the type of food. Oh, getting Cause high like, off of it. Because me, myself, like, people think that, like, if I've had a good meal, sometimes people think I'm drunk because mm-hmm. I'll just be swaying because, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like a, I'm a food it's swear. Like, if yeah. it's really good, it I, like, dance for my food. food. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I'm like, I'm, I, get reaction. Off, I get high off life. Like, if it's a good meal, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, for me, that's what I that's what I think of is, like, a food euphoria. Because I, I get that. I get food euphoria. I'm just like, oh, so good. It's in your name. In my tummy. Exactly. In my tummy. <laughs> so that's um, what I think of just, like, based off of the word itself. Mm, just like, the, the I mean, the phrase, phrase itself. I, I agree with you, actually. I think that's part of it, too. I don't, I don't know why. When I was watching it and I was thinking, I was like, what does this phrase mean? I definitely think it's mostly what you were saying, but I also think it means, like, they um, utilizing all of the hog. And I also think it's, like, like uh, maybe part of the hog that's high, like, I was thinking about the versus I was thinking the different about the, cuts, maybe. I was thinking, exactly. I was thinking about how the different parts where they're, like, the masters had the best parts and mm-hmm. then they had to have the, be- the, the, the worst parts, but it's, like, they considered it high on the hog anyway because mm. they like they gotta get all the parts mm. you know they didn't get the high end but they got this end and they made it high mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's kind of what i was thinking mm. but i think I, I i think it's more so what you're saying but i think what i'm saying is a little bit in there mm. but i think it's mostly about euphoria food euphoria <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what are we rating this episode? The this series. It's a docu series, guys. But I'm telling you, it will not. It will. You won't like. It won't be like a boring documentary type thing. It's really not because it's full of stories, different people, and the delicious food. It's basically a food show with fun facts. <laughs> not not fun facts. With like historical facts. Hmm. I just think it's. I like edutainment, educational entertainment. Mm-hmm. So it's it's that. It's very much that. Mm. Um, but I'm gonna give it a ten glasses. Ah, because it's for the culture. Got you. Got you. It's for the culture, and I just I love it. I I could watch it. I have no problem watching it multiple times because I have seen it multiple times mm. because it's just I see I learn something new or remember something. Okay. Like every time I've watched, it, I'm like, oh crap, I, fe- I forgot about that. So I've seen it like twice now. And I liked it. What are you reading it? I would give it eight glasses. Okay. okay. I'm not as much of a documentary person. It was good. I know, I'm so proud of you for watching it. Because <laughs> when this. you suggested I was like, ah. I knew you wouldn't be down. <laughs> but I was like, but we yeah. got to do a, a something for Juneteenth. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the Juneteenth episode where they, in the beginning of the fourth episode, y'all, please watch that. Pay attention. Um, you learned about the oh, foods and the colors and everything. I especially love, I just want, I want to go to a historically back black college or university to see oh, the, the bands. marching bands. Yeah. Because you cannot get that at like a non yeah. HBCU. Yeah. You can. And I'm like, dude, they are doing the damn thing. Yes. Like the drum line and stuff. I'm you like, like I was like, like they were oh, genuine oh, oh snap. Pony. I feel you like, saw them dancing like, feel like I need some dollar bills. Right. <laughs> I was like, dang, they on the floor with me. But they do it. But my mom would tell me about that because she was in marching band. She was like, yeah, like you got to like, that's where you wanted to be was near the marching band mm-hmm. because that was it. And yep. you watch like my brother would play YouTube videos sometimes and you would see like these HBCUs where they like the entire stuff. town mm-hmm. is there because it's just so big. And most mm-hmm. people aren't even it's not they're not even quite there for the football game. They're there for the, mar- the band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just like, this is awesome. I want to experience this. I, know. I was like, man, next time we got to just like roll up to like a game or something mm. or at least just the, the damn part and yeah the exactly exactly i don't really like football but don't come for me I'm just, <laughs> i don't like american football so no but gotcha but yeah i understand i look i like a marching band i really do yeah I'm that really was good. i just was like dude yes this 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 right here yes yeah, so so that's uh that looks like it's an average of nine glasses y'all Hey, <laughs> 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 All right, so just in honor of the, I just really want us to showcase this in honor of Juneteenth, just to do something, to have some conversation, yeah. encourage, you know, I mean, I just I just really was so compelled. I was like, we got to do something. I, I think it was a good recommendation because it, it takes, like, for a person like reflection. me who's not really into documentaries very much, mm. but then 
crossing it over with food, which I'm very much into. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like they got me, hook, yeah. line, and sinker. I even like the part where the girl made the red velvet cheesecake for Juneteenth, and she used beets to make it red instead of that dye. That was interesting. And I'm like, now that I would taste, a mm. beet-infused cake, yes, let's do it. Yes. I wanted to eat all those desserts, like I all know. the Juneteenth desserts. Uh, I just, I wanted everything. I wanted <laughs> some hibiscus tea, and I wanted some cake, and mm. I, some, I wanted that raspberry pie. I just... So much so that when I did my work event, I made everyone bring a red dessert and the red drink. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. It was great. But that is it. And now just, you know, happy Juneteenth to everybody. Um, continue to celebrate and work for freedom and uplifting the black people, black communities and our cultures. Mm. I mean, we really got to come together. I think when we do, we are better. Come we together. together. Right? Right now. Over me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> we always do that and then like I don't know the rest. <laughs> Here comes come old old black foot, foot. He come grooving up slowly. He got juju eyeball. He Coca Cola. Go. He She's got hands down to his knees. Got to be a joker. He just does what he please. Come together right now over me. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Have an awesome everyone. day. Happy Juneteenth. And enjoy the rest of the summer. Indeed. See Blurred you in the next out. episode. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to our show on whatever podcast listening app you use and share the show with other blurred and non blurred family and friends. And if you like our episode, please rate and review us on iTunes. The intro and outro music is Twilight by Caption. You can find them on SoundCloud, the username Caption, spelled C A P S H U N. The show notes are by Bola Hansen, and the audio engineering is by Whitney Booker. And you can contact us by email at blurredtalkbw at gmail.com. And also, don't forget to get social, you guys. You can find us on our social media at Instagram and Twitter with our at handle being at blurredtalkbw. And we've got our individual things going on too, y'all. So you can find me, your blurred fashionista, on Instagram and Twitter at Bola Story B. That's B with two E's like the insect. And I've got my own personal YouTube channel, just Bola Shade. That's B O L A S H A D E. He's a dog, he is an elephant. And this is Whitney. You can find me at my company, Luminavi Studios. The email address is wit at luminavi.com. That's W H I T at L U M E N A V I.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Luminavi Studios.